tackle another uh, ranking cycle problem, okay? This problem, and I'll put it in the description so that you can read along, it says a steam power plant operates on a simple ideal ranking cycle between the pressure limits of 3 megapascals and 50 kilopascals. Um, the temperature of the steam at the turbine inlet is 300 degrees Celsius and the mass flow rate of the steam through the cycle is 35 kilograms per second. Show the cycle on a TS diagram with respect to the saturation lines and determine A, the thermal efficiency of the cycle and B, the net power output of the cycle. So, what am I gonna first do? I'm gonna first gather my properties, okay? T1, T2, T3, T4, blah, 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 blah. So they told me that the temperature of the steam at the inline, the, the temperature of the steam at the turbine inlet is 300 degrees Celsius. And uh, you're gonna have to bear with me, I haven't really done this problem in probably like a year or two. So, um, I'm gonna have to sort of think on the spot, so just, just bear with me if I can't really just flow out information. So, I have T3 equals 300 degrees Celsius. Why do I know that it's T3 and it's not T1? Because it's the inlet, inlet at the turbine, which is the, the third point. Three to four is when we're dealing with our isentropic expansion. Yes, because it goes one, two, three, four. So that's why, okay? Um, turbine inlet is 300 degrees Celsius. It's between the pressure limits of three megapascals and 50 kilopascals. Now, the good thing about the Rankine cycle, it only operates between uh, two pressures, the ideal Rankine cycle, right? So, I know that my P2 and my P3 are gonna be equal, and my P1 and my P4 are gonna be equal. P1 and P4 are at the low uh, pressure, and P2 and P3 are at the high pressure. So I can go ahead and say that three megapascals here, and three megapascals here. And I can say 50 kilopascals here, and 50 kilopascals here. Cool. And I'm sort of filling up my, uh, my graph. I can already see that I can get, like you only need two uh, independent uh, properties to define a whole system, right? So I can get every point here that I need. What I also know is that um, the mass flow rate of the steam is 35 degrees Celsius. I'll just write that down here somewhere. M dot is 35. I said 35 degrees Celsius, 35 kilograms per second. <laughs> um, okay, cool. Now what I'm gonna go ahead and do, I can actually find every point here because I know that this is at, uh, this is at T, I mean, yes, this is at TS. This is saturated, a saturated liquid, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and look for V1, and I'll tell you why I'm doing that. H1 and S1, wow. Okay, I might have to erase that and move it. But basically, I'm looking for V1 because um, I'm looking for, what did they ask? The net power output of the plant. So I have to have know my work in, which is gonna be my uh, VDP, which uh, my V is constant. I'll show you on the graph, but my V is constant and it's just the change in pressure that I'm gonna have to deal with. Cool, so, um, let's show the cycle on a TS diagram. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'll draw the TS diagram right here. I know that I'm dealing with water, so I'm gonna have my dome. I know that I'm dealing with two pressures. One is higher than the other. This is obviously gonna be the high pressure. This is a constant pressure line, right? This is gonna be the low pressure. It's constant pressure line again. Cool, I'm gonna start off as a saturated liquid. That's just what we do for the Rankine cycle. I'm gonna go straight up because it's an isentropic compression, meaning that the S doesn't change. So this is my point two. This is my point one right here. And then I'm gonna follow this line, and then I'm gonna, I am drew that arrow. So I'm gonna follow this line up to somewhere around here. And then because they told us that uh, I have a quality, did it say quality? Oh no, no, maybe not. But um, I'm just gonna take a guess and say that I, I end up as uh, a saturated li liquid vapor mixture. So this is my point four, this is my point three. Cool. That's the graph that you're gonna use. And if you want, you can end up drawing your Q in, Q out, work in, work out and everything. Um, I can do that later. But uh, basically what else do I know? I know that, um, let me go ahead and get my, my, let me just do my V3 H3 and 
S3 for this. Let me just, just in case. And I'll start off with this one, just because I like using the saturated tables more than the superheated tables sometimes. Um, 50 kilopascals. My V1 is gonna be my VF, okay? So for 50 kilopascals, my V1 is 0 0.001030. Cool. Let me move this to the right a little bit. And that's meters cubed per kilogram, okay? Because it's specific volume. My H1 is just going to be my HF at 50 kilopascals, and that is 340.54. Um, Sometimes it takes me a little bit longer to read these tables simply because I don't want to mess up. It's very easy to just say, to just look at something and, and end up on a totally separate line. So just be very careful of that, okay? My S1 is equal to SF at that point, which is 1.0912. And this is kilojoules per kilograms. Man. I'll just write it here, okay? This is kilojoules per kilogram. Because I don't want it to stretch into the next property. This is kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin, okay? Cool. Now, that's my, that's everything at P1. Now, automatically, I can go ahead and find my work in, which I know I need for the network produced, right? My work in is gonna be, because like, I, okay, so like water is incompressible, okay? So that's why basically, at the point of a, uh, at the point of a saturated liquid, we're gonna go ahead and say that the water stays constant, the volume of the water stays constant from point one to point two. Those are the assumptions that we can make for the Rankine cycle. And we know that work in is uh, negative V times the integral of, or let me say it's the integral of, it's the negative integral of V D P, okay? And because, and this is specific, specific, okay? Because, um, because I can, because I know that my V is gonna be constant, I can pull that out of the integral. And I can go ahead and say that work is equal to negative V D P, okay? And that being said, I think this is actually supposed to just be work, okay? And the reason it's negative is because it's, it's, it's work in, okay? But basically, what we're gonna end up doing is saying that my work in is equal to V times, this becomes delta V, right? Cool. Now I can say that V, that work in is equal to V times P2 minus P1. So my specific work in, or you know what I'm gonna go ahead and do? I'm gonna go ahead and solve for my total work in, which would be M dot, give me two seconds. Sort of my power in, so they asked for, they asked for the net power output, so that's work over time. So this just basically has a dot over it, okay? So that's mass flow rate, that's what gives this the dot, times specific volume times delta P, okay? So my work in, well power in, is gonna be equal to V, which is 0 0.001030 times P2 minus P1, and that's gonna be in kilopascals, 3000 minus 50, okay? Because three megapascals is equal to 3000 kilopascals, minus 50 kilopascals. Cool. Power in is equal to, let me get my calculator. Power in is equal to 0 0.001030 times 3,000 minus 50. And I actually have the answers here, so let me just double check that that's correct. Yes, 3. I got 3.0385, and that's gonna be in kilojoules. Cool. Um, next, what do I know? Okay, so I know that thermal efficiency is equal to eta, which is equal to one minus Q out over Q in, right? Cool. Now, I know that um, my Q out is gonna be, so basically you have constant pressure heat addition from this point to this point, right? So you have your Q in here, right? Cool. You also have your Q out here. So what you can end up doing 
is um, sort of like taking an analysis of the boiler and and you you can sort of see like what your cue out is. What um what can you do? Let me just think really quick. Um okay, so the boiler the boiler is an open system. So I know that um I'm gonna deal from point two to three with the boiler, okay? So just taking like like an open system, right? Because it's a boiler, I can say that I'm always gonna have my H's. That's involved in any open system, and I can neglect kinetic energy and potential energy because um, it's kinetic energy and potential energy. We don't care about kinetic. No, I'm just kidding. But it's a stationary um, plant, right? So it's not things aren't moving around all that much for us to take those into account. So, and I know that I have a Q in, which goes on this side. So my Q in is equal to H three minus H two. Cool. Do I have those values? Not yet. Um, I know that my S2 at this point is equal to S3. I mean S1. Because it's an isentropic compression. Meaning that the entropy stays the same. So I can use this and this to find all of my other values. What I'm going to do, because I don't want to have to start interpolating for this whole problem. I'm just going to choose the nearest values. Okay? So I'm going to go to my... Um, I know that it's a compressed liquid, so I'm just going to go to uh, my 3 megapascals, and I'm just going to see some stuff really quick. Like I said, sorry it's taking me so long to think. I, just, I don't want to get it wrong for y'all. Um, that's F is equal to... Okay, let me see what I did on the paper. Okay, I didn't really write down the steps. But um, let me try something really quick. So what I'm going to go ahead and try and just assume is that um, the same way I assume that the volume is constant, right? I'm going to go ahead and assume that these values are constant too. So let me just say that, let me go ahead and find my properties at, at 3, okay? And I'm going to see if what I did, because I have the answers right here, I'm going to see if that makes sense, okay? So I go to 3 megapascals and 300 degrees Celsius. And I find my properties there. My V is 0 0.08118. And just to save space, I'm not going to put the units. You know that it's, it's uh, meters cubed per kilograms, right? My H3 is my H at those values. So um, that's... 2994 and you should be doing this with me just just to see where I'm getting these values from 2994.3 okay and enthalpy entropy is 6.5412 okay cool specific entropy that is cool now I'm gonna go ahead and say that um so I know that my QN is equal to H3 minus H2 so if I get the same value the value I have here is 343 0.57 kilojoules per kilogram for the specific, um, I'm sorry, for my QN, I have 2,650.72. So if I get that same value, I know that I'm on the right track. Okay? So H3 minus H2, and I'm going to take my H2 to be this. Let's see what happens. 2994.3 minus 340.54. That gives me 2653.76. So that's, that's, I'm, um, I'm, um, so we assume everything to be constant here. So my Q in equals H3, which is 2994.3 minus 340.54. And that gives me 2653.76 kilojoules per kilogram. Cool, okay? Now, what am I looking for? My Q out, right? Same thing, we're gonna look at the condenser as an open system. And I know that for a condenser, I have my H3, or it's my H4, which is the inlet in this situation, and my H1, okay? And I know that Q is going out, so it's gonna be on the right side, okay? Cool, now, how do I find my H4? I know that H4, Basically, I know that, um, did they tell me that the, 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 
Well, you know they didn't. Okay, I know that my S3 is going to equal my S4 because it's an isentropic uh, expansion. Cool. Now, what do I do? I can use this to find all the other values, right? Um, I, know that, I know the values of, of everything at 50 kilopascals, and I know the values of everything, like, I know that these are all the F values, and you'll see why I'm gonna use those in a second. I can go ahead and use my quality equation. So I'm gonna come and bring that over here. I know that um, S4 is equal to 6.59412, and that's gonna be equal to SF plus X times SFG. SF, I'm trying to find my quality here so that I can find my exact enthalpy at 0.4, and then that'll be, I'll have all the information I need to get my QR, okay? So SF, isn't this just SF at 10 kilopascals? I mean, at 50 kilopascals? Yes. So my SF at 50 kilopascals is 1.0, 1.0190912. And I'm gonna go ahead and write that equation for y'all just in case maybe some new viewers, you don't know what I'm talking about. If I have any um, intensive property, I can go ahead and say that Z, which is that intensive property, Z at a point is equal to ZF, which is the value of that property at, um, the, at the point where it's a uh, saturated liquid, plus X, which is my quality, times ZFG. So that's why I'm using this equation from. That's why I'm getting this, okay? Cool. Now. I'm looking for my equality, and I know my SFG at 10. I can get it from the table. My SFG at 10 is um, at 10 megapascals, or at 50, why do I keep saying 10? I just did a problem with 10 mega kilopascals. At 50 kilopascals, my SFG is 6.5019. Cool. Now X becomes... You just solve for that, that's just algebra at this point in time. 6.59412 minus 1.0912. That value divided by 6.05, 6.5019 That gives me 0 0.8464. Now I can find my, uh, my H4. H4 is gonna be equal to HF. H4 is gonna be equal to HF at 50 kilopascals which is 340.54 plus X, which is 0 0.8464 times HFG. HFG at 50 is given by 2304.7. Now I know that my H4 is equal to this whole thing right here. Two thousand two hundred and ninety-one point one four. Cool. Now I can find my Q out. Q out is given by H four minus H one. And the good way to check yourself. That's why I like using this method of 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 the energy balance because sometimes, like with the other method that I talk about in the, another one of my videos, you would end up with some negatives. And sometimes, like it's like, huh, like what? What? Am I correct here? But my Q out always has to be positive, meaning that my H4 calculated has to be bigger than my H1 that I calculated, right, to give me a positive number. And indeed it is. So my Q out is equal to H4, which is 2291.14 minus 340.54. And that means that my Q out is equal to 340.54. One nine five zero point six zero, and that's kilojoules per kilogram. That being said, now I can find my thermal efficiency. My thermal efficiency, man, I'm really running out of space here. Um, my thermal efficiency is going to be given by eta, which is equal to one minus Q out over Q in, which is given by one minus Q out, which is one nine. 50.6 all over 2653.76 and I'm gonna go ahead and erase this board just just to give us more space after this but uh, basically you should get that your thermal efficiency is equal
equal to 0 0.2649. Um, hmm. <laughs> 0.2649 is my ADA. Or you can say 26.49%, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and erase that other part, the rest of the board. Um, sorry, I didn't write my, my values there. Here, H4 is equal to 2, 291.14. I'll just write X is equal to, I guess I should say X4, right? Because the X are 0 0.4, 0 0.8464. Okay, cool, I'm gonna erase these. Y'all know where I got these from, okay? Cool, I'm gonna erase this. And I'm just gonna leave this part right here. Cool, cool, cool. I know my work in. And my work out, can't that just be gotten by, um, or rather they ask for the network, right? The net power, right? That can literally be gotten by Q out minus Q in times my mass flow rate. So my work, well, I didn't even have to calculate work in, did I? Okay, let's see what happens. Work net is simply equal to M dot times Q out minus Q in. M dot is given by, let's see, M dot is given by 35. And my Q out is, I'm sorry, it's Q in minus Q out. That's my network, right? So Q in minus Q out. Cool. Sorry, y'all, I'm, I'm a little rusty. I haven't done thermal in a minute. 2653.76 minus 1950.6. So my work net, power net really, I should say power net is equal to 2461 0.6 and that would be in kilowatts I believe or, sorry this should be in kilowatts also now let's see what happens let me see if I'm correct okay I guess they were asking for the specific Q net so let me see what happens if I divide this by 35 yeah so um, this is the actual power out I think I calculated the specific power out but this is your answer. And if they were asking for the specific power out, you would literally just divide by this 35. Um, here's what I did to get this. I did 35 times Q out 2653.76 minus 1950.6. That's how I got that. If you wanted the specific, um, the specific work or power out, you would have, um, just, you just divide by that m dot. And this is my thermal efficiency. And a good way to check yourself, that always has to be less than one also. So that's really all they asked for. Um, yeah, did I leave anything out? I guess if you wanted to, you could add on these graphs. This is where your workout is coming from. You could say power out even. And then this is where your work in is going. But I mean, I don't. it just depends on how your teacher wants it. But yeah, that's how you do this. Again, if anything was unclear, please feel free to leave questions in the comment section. Uh, feel free to uh, suggest more videos that I should make. And let's keep learning thermal. Thank you.